So you've lived with Little Blue for 35 years. You get to bed at night and you have all these what ifs and... What are some of those? Well, <clears throat> you wonder about your kids. Are they going to grow it's up and not my have choice. repercussions health they wise? Moved in or, here. You, know, you know, this property, where are you going to go from here? Are you going to be able to live in the same community? Are you going to be able to you have to move out of state? Concern is that I wish these people could come down here and live this for a few months or even a couple of weeks through the thick of everything that's happening to see how they would feel if they in their backyard. This is everybody's backyard. That's Coash. You have a moment in time right now that you get together and you say, when is enough enough? beautiful when we first moved in. My brothers live in Alabama and we had just been down there. They have that beautiful clear turquoise water and when I came home I took a picture of Little Blue and said look you're not the only one with turquoise water. <laughs> Ours just isn't natural you know. When I used to hunt I noticed up even when the dam went in I didn't being I lived here I didn't even know anything about it. They were starting to build a power plant and uh, when I was hunting up there, there were survey markers in, and I had no idea, you know, that this thing was going in. And I mean, this is like the, uh, became the biggest dam east of the Mississippi River. But I did work at the Lyman Sludge, you know, which was, uh, we took care of pumping the sludge from the plant in shipping port to uh, the impoundment area. And uh, the slurry that we pumped was uh, from the process of burning high sulfur coal. It, it was a wet scrubber system that would clean uh, the SO2 out of the air and, uh, and the the finished product or the byproduct that was going to the dam, like I said, was the sludge. This thing is three 850 megawatt units, which I'm sure could light up a lot of cities. And, you know, a lot of it's being sold uh, to areas all over the place. But we have to pay the price, you know, with, uh, you know, with the pollution that comes from the plant itself and the dam. I don't even know how to shoot this thing, it's so big. <laughs> The hillside beyond the nuclear plant is where the coal ash is, is shipped via a pipeline seven miles up into that hillside where Little Blue is. The bill of goods that they sold these people back in the 70s, when they, they early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, when they came around saying they were going to do this, was that this was going to be a recreational area for the, for the uh, community with fishing and boating and swimming and can you just imagine your children swimming? You don't hear any birds. You don't see anything moving. It's just this strange, eerie quietness. You 
mind standing in front of the camera? Standing in front of the camera. I can face the toe. I can't face this way. I have my shirt up in the air because it stinks like rotten eggs here. It's really, really bad today, and I'm sure the people of Lawrenceville are enjoying this. I mean, it did make you think, you know, but then you were told there's nothing in it that's going to hurt you and stuff, you know, and um, the cancer rate in this area is, is one of the highest in the country, not, not just right here, but the whole panhandle, actually, the whole tri-state area, you know, but uh, I don't know, I just, the uncertainty of everything, you know, and, and uh, just, you know, being outside for a little bit, um, if you can be outside. Just over the years, things have been changing, and the, the ground is so soft and wet now that you couldn't put anything there if you wanted to. It's not rocket science that you put those what, the tubes, which are also filled with coash, on top of each other, plus you're pumping it in, you know, and it's spreading out. And like the little dumb hoopy that I am, that water is not going to look for a little black pipe to go into. It's going to find its own trail, and that could be in your backyard, you know, your front, wherever. But it's the weight of the, of the geotubes on the dam already, you know, that's spreading out, and we believe that's why we have the seeps. drying the impoundment up and um, being how it's unlined, uh, the water shifts all around underground and um, it's just running out of the hillside up behind our house and it's there's just water everywhere. It's mud, the bugs are horrendous, the smells ungodly, you can't even stand to be outside some of the time. The mosquitoes are ridiculous. We can't have a garden. The garden, it's so wet up there. If you do till it and it don't rain for weeks and weeks and weeks, it's just mud balls. You, you couldn't grow anything. Mm -hmm. This water's staining. <laughs> I know, that's what I said. Watch. Yeah, okay. Under my heel. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Get stuck in there, buddy. Coming worse. Yeah, it's getting worse. This tree down there, it has little willows on it, and it brought it off right at the top of the ground from that water running down underneath of the thing because it runs from right here right down there. You can see where it's all rotted off. Mm -hmm. And if you want to walk down over the hill, you got your wading boots on. Because I've worked 43 years in the pottery down there in order to have what I've got. Now they come in here and just took over and destroyed it all. And I, you know, we, we didn't ask for this mess down in here, and they should be made to take care of it clean it up and do whatever they can do with it. I don't think they even care about our health or the animals or anything else, and they've destroyed all the land they are around here. This one you gotta kinda watch. <laughs> See that? Oh man. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That is like what? It's like. Yep, that's wow. that's part of the sea piece and it comes. They just bought this house up here behind us out and it's been torn down. High in line, it comes down through his backyard, comes out here. Wow. Can you press your feet a little bit more? Sure. <laughs> I know it's not the most comfortable thing. 
Pretty nasty. So even starting to get up in here. So you can just you can, you can sit there and step and see the water squirt. So can you explain what this is? It's one of their uh, pumping stations that uh, pumps the water back up to the impoundment. It's uh, seeping through the hillside. Um, they took a lot of trees down to make uh, access roads to uh, get down in through here. Um, two weeks ago, we had uh, Pennsylvania DEP here, and they confirmed there was uh, on this hillside there's five more places that it's leaking that they're not catching it. So they'll probably have to do some more digging to convert uh, the leaks into it. I mean, yeah, I'm just trying to even myself get a sense of it. Yeah, it's completely it swamped back here. The swamp. Yeah. I don't think I want to know what's in the water. I know. It's all over my feet. As far as the soil, I um, got a hold of Kevin McGowan and he said to contact this community because they need to do this first. So I'm still like, I'm 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 like, What's going to happen to Lawrenceville and all the way down a river? <laughs> What's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. That, that, I think that's the scary part. I don't know. It's possible. There's a lot of unknowns. But the things we do know is not good. <laughs> like what's in the water over there, you know, the chemicals and toxic, uh, selenium, arsenic, mercury, you name it, it's in over there and it's never going to go away. Do I think that Little Blue affected the environment, which could have potentially caused the issues um, that I've been dealing with? Absolutely. But is there a for sure way to know? I'm almost too afraid to ask my doctors. You know, when people make poor choices, there are consequences in life. and. When businesses make poor choices, there's consequences in the community. And so I'm just grateful for anybody that, um, for the opportunity to speak to anybody that's willing to listen, that they would have a voice so that people in my situation, um, you know, I'm blessed to have outlived 20 some years of cancer. And, and there's a lot of people that have gone before me that haven't had that blessing. Um, and so because of that reason, I'm, I'm speaking on their behalf. There's been a lot of types of cancer in our community that are pocketed here that are normally not types of cancer. Um, like I know when I had my Hodgkin's issues, there were seven active cases in this community alone. And that's 
from what I understand, um, at the time that was unheard of. There's a lot of people that are very sick in this area and there has to be a reason for it. You go to bed at night and you have all these what ifs and... and what are some of those? Well, <clears throat> you wonder about your kids. Are they going to grow up and have repercussions health wise? Are, you know, where are you going to go from here? Are you going to be able to live in the same community? Are you going to be able to, do you have to move out of state? Are you going to, I mean, it's just, it's just a sad, a sad situation. I mean, concerns is that you wish that these people could come down here and live this for a few months or even a couple of weeks through the thick of everything that's happened and see how they would feel if this was in their backyard. Uh, I was a maintenance repairman in my last, for my last 35 years of service at Raccoon Creek State Park. I spent 35 years working for that outfit, trying to keep the park clean, keep the trash cleaned up, and keep the water from being polluted. And my backyard just goes apart with this little blue over here. It's disgusting. I don't know, I don't know the cure. I really don't. I don't know the cure, but uh, I know They've created a monster which, which they cannot control. They know what it'll do, but they can't stop it. Once you light that fuse, it's burning. How far are they gonna go? Because we're standing here, what? Uh, uh, maybe a football field away from the, the impoundment, and we can see how far they own which is beyond the that green roof over there? How much how much more land do they want to own? They they've bought all of this, acres and acres of this, and they want to destroy it just like they destroyed what's behind us. Two two years ago, First Energy made their announcement that they wanted to uh, expand the the dump. And people really and truly were like, enough is enough. We started out as a very small group, okay. you know, we were very at small. a kitchen table. And then the next thing you know, we were meeting with 50 people in a, in a room at the local legion. I mean, we were like bears in the winter. We all went in the house, shut everything up, locked, you know, you couldn't breathe. I don't care what time it is at night or afternoon or, you know, early morning, 7.30, and that's said today. It smelled just like it did the other night at 10. What's his name? The first one. The first, the first one. Yeah. Call him. Call him. I don't care if it's midnight. So you've lived with Little Blue for 35 years, and all they do is buy up more beautiful land and trash it. It can never be anything else but waste dumping. So as a community, whether you're in Georgetown, Hookstown, Green Township, or Hancock County, you have a moment in time right now that you get together and you say, when is enough enough? Because are we to understand that eventually they're just going to keep buying up all this beautiful land, displacing families, ruining communities, and, and, and then, what, 50 years from now, all of this beautiful land is just waste dumping with a chain link fence around it? In my opinion, that's where they're headed. All you need to do is be sure that nobody takes away your voice.
ask you to take it a step further, um, not only to be educated, to be an activist. Well, more people have to listen to what we're saying. I know we're not a lot of people here. What do you do when sulfur dioxide comes over the hill? It never was wet like that before, up till this last past year. And I thought, well, where in the world? Our water's coming more and more. It is. I that hill said that whole chain. It's unlivable. It's a disgrace. And it should not be happening. They came to us. We don't want them.